Well, good morning, everybody. So excited again to be in church today. It's so good to see your teeth. I'm so excited again. It's just a beautiful Sunday just to see everybody. And I thank you, everyone who's joining us online. So excited that you're joining us. If you're your first time even watching our stream today, I just want to say thank you for joining us. We pray that just God has something for you today. If you don't know me, my name is Dustin, and I'm the lead pastor here uh, at Victory Church on the Rock. And, you know, we, my wife and I, we've been here since March, and we're just loving being a part of this church, loving getting to know everybody, loving just seeing everybody. And so just, it's an honor for us to be here and be able to pastor you and we're, we're just excited again to, for today. We're starting this brand new series called I Am. It's just, we're going through the seven uh, statements that Jesus makes in the book of John. So the seven statements that Jesus say, makes where he says, I am. And, and I, one thing I want, to, I want you to know, and this is real for me, is that getting to know people can be really, really hard. I don't know if you've ever gathered that. Getting to know people deeply can be really, really challenging. And I find one of the best ways to get to know people is to ask them about themselves, right? To have a conversation, say, hey, what do you like? What do you do? Like all those kind of things to get to know people better. When people talk about themselves, I think you get a pretty clear understanding of people's motives and people's perceived thoughts about themselves. And when we ask people questions, I don't know if you've ever watched the show like American Idol or, or The X Factor or... Uh, America's Got Talent, I don't know if you ever watch a show like that, but I'm telling you, there's some people who show up to those things, and they have a pretty clear understanding of who they are, but then, then they show their talent, and you realize maybe they're, they're not as, as talented in this area as they originally thought. I don't know if you ever watched American Idol. Like, if you go through and watch American Idol, I'm telling you, there are some people who, I don't know, I don't know what happened, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just saying I don't know what happened, but they, are, they believe they are very talented at specifically singing. They really do. They believe that they're like the most incredible singers, and they get on stage, and they start singing. And you're like, how did you, how did you get this, this far with this? Someone may, maybe, maybe someone told them their whole life, hey, you're great at singing. I heard you singing in the shower, and man, whew, you are so good. You should go to American Idol. I don't know if someone was tricking them or what it is, but, but, but oftentimes when we talk about ourselves is when we get a pretty clear understanding of who we actually are. And in the book of John, again, the, in the Bible, there's seven statements. So Jesus, he says, this is who I am. When Jesus opens his mouth and says, this is who I am, I think we should listen. Right? Because I think right now in the world, there's a lot of different opinions on who Jesus is. There's a lot of different thoughts on who Jesus is. is was, he, was he actually here? Was he just a prophet? Whatever. And when we look at these statements, this is Jesus saying, this is who I am. These are the seven I am statements. Jesus directly saying to us, to his disciples, to the crowds, I am. Am. And again, these statements, sometimes we might not even fully understand them when Jesus says some of these things. But our hope is that during this series, we can spend some time together diving into it, learning more about Jesus, learning more about the God that we worship. And the first statement that we want to go through today, John 6, verse 35, and this is what it says. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. I am the bread of life. I think when we look at this, we can, some of us might be a little bit confused. Like, what does it mean to be the bread of life? Like, I know that I love carbs, right? I, I love my, my bread. I love it. It's tasty. You put a little butter on it in the toaster. It's delicious. And we're thinking, how is Jesus my toasty bread with butter? How is Jesus the bread of life? We can be a little confused as to what he's actually saying. And so what I want to spend today doing is looking at the context of where he said this powerful statement, I am the bread of life. And if we go to the beginning of this book, John chapter 6, so if you have your Bible, you can go there. But at the beginning of John chapter 6, we see Jesus, he's teaching thousands of people on a mountain. He's teaching people, and he's teaching people, and he's teaching people. And then all of a sudden, Jesus and his disciples realize everybody's really hungry. Like, they've been listening to Jesus talk, and they're hungry. They don't have food. And, and so they go to him, hey, like, maybe we should send people away. Or, like, maybe how, how are we going to get enough money to feed all these people? <coughs> and then they look around, and all they see, they have five loaves of bread, and they have two fish. Now, thousands of people, right? Like some of us, we have families, and like that's not enough food just to feed our family. Like, our, like some of like our kids, I'm telling you, my daughter is not even is just about one years old. She eats so much food. 
Like I'm telling you, I have no idea how much food she can have inside of her body at one time. I just don't understand it. Obviously, there's a way, but, but we have here five loaves and two fish, and that's not enough food to feed all these people. So Jesus, he, he takes what was given to him, this bread and, and these fish, and he, and, and he thanks God and says, hey, God, thank you for this food, and they start to distribute it to the people in the crowd. And everybody starts getting their food. Everybody starts getting their bread. Everybody starts getting their fish. Everybody starts getting their full, and they're looking around and more food and more food. I can't imagine being there in that moment where you're sitting there, and you look at Jesus, and he's, he has a couple of loaves, of loaves of bread and some fish, and all of a sudden, you're like, at the back of the line, you're like, I'm not getting food today. Right? Like, you're looking at the back, you're like, oh, shoot. Like, like I'm actually going to go hungry today, because this is clearly not enough food. And then you see the food make it, like, halfway through. You're like, whoa. Maybe I will get some food today, right? And then moments later, you're, like, getting closer to you. You're like, man, I think I might actually get some food today. And so Jesus, he distributes it, and disciples distribute it, and everybody gets their fair share of food. Everybody gets food, and it says, then the people believed in Jesus, so they wanted to make him the king. Like, they're like, hey, you fed us, we're hungry, you're the king now. Like, we want to make you the king of our land, and so what does Jesus do? He leaves. You know, these people, they wanted to give Jesus power, they wanted to give him the throne, and Jesus is like, no. So he leaves, and we can see that right here in John 6, verse 14. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. When Jesus saw that they were ready to force him to be their king, he slipped away into the hills by himself. You know, we see Jesus, as humans, we see Jesus meet our needs, and we start to believe in him, and we start to believe in our future. We say, Jesus, man, like, like you're providing the meals that I need. You're providing the water. I think oftentimes we're waiting for him to meet our needs before we believe. We're oftentimes we're waiting for him to feed us, to prosper us, to heal us before we even believe in him. Before we believe in him. When things are going so well, it's so easy to commit to Jesus. It's so easy to commit to Jesus when we have enough food on our table. It's so easy to believe in Jesus when we can turn on our tap and have clean drinking water. It's so easy to believe in Jesus when our bank account is looking good, when our job is looking good, when our marriage is looking good, when our relationship with our kids is good. It's so easy to commit to Jesus and believe in him when things are going well. But I think oftentimes when things aren't going well, oftentimes our first response is to question him again. Right? We're looking for him to meet our physical needs. And so we start to question, like, God, like, Jesus, are, are you really there for me? Don't you know my struggle? Don't you know my need right now in this moment? You know, they, these people, they pursued Jesus because of what he gave them physically. You know, he met a physical need for them. So they wanted to continue to have this free food, right? Free food. They just pursued him. Hey, I'm going to find you and I'm going to get the food that you have. So Jesus is like, no, this is wrong. So he leaves. He gathers all these people. It's going well. He sees a problem and he leaves. And the next day, they're searching for Jesus, right? He had just fed them and he left. And like, Jesus, where did you go? They're searching for him, searching for him. And when they finally found him, they started asking questions. John 6, verse 25. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? The other side of the sea. Jesus went a long way and they searched a long distance to try and find Jesus. They went to the other side of the sea. That's where Jesus went and they followed him. The other side of the sea. And they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus asked, answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me. Not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of loaves. Because you got fed. That's why you're following me. That's why you want me to be king. It's not because you saw signs and wonders. It's because you ate. It's because you actually ate food. You actually got what your stomach was desiring, not what your heart was desiring. That's why you follow me. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Some of these people, right, they're, they're seeking Jesus for the wrong reason. They're actually pursuing him for the wrong reason. They were chasing a physical sustenance rather than a spiritual fulfillment. 
They were looking for something physical to meet their, to meet their needs physically, but they didn't realize that Jesus was there to meet, meet their needs spiritually. Right? He says to them, do not work for the food that perishes. This food, it doesn't last forever. It's not going to last overnight. But what I have for you is so much bigger than a loaf of bread. It's so much bigger than me meeting your physical hungry need. So Jesus says to them, no, like, you're chasing me for the wrong reason. So they think, right? They think, okay, so Jesus says, hey, we're doing this wrong. So they ask this question, what should we be doing? John 6, 28. Then they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? What must we do? <coughs> Jesus answered them, this is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent. You know, Jesus here, he, he responds, is, is so simple and elegant and beautiful. This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. That's the work. Jesus' response, again, is so beautiful. The work of God is not eating, it's believing. The work of, the work of God is not drinking, it's believing in him. And he's saying to them, guys, you're believing in me for the wrong reason. You want me to be king for the wrong reason. I don't want to be king of your land. I want to be king of your heart. They tried to put him on the throne. And he's saying, that's the wrong throne. The throne I have, that I have for you, is in your heart. The king of your life, not of your land. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell these people. The work of God is not always physical. It's always spiritual. We might not get the, the physical miracle, but the biggest miracle we get is not physical, it's spiritual, it's salvation. It's that he came and died for us. That's the biggest miracle that we could ever receive. Every other miracle is temporary. Right? Every miracle is temporary. Even if God provides us with a meal, the next day we're going to be hungry. The next day we're still going to be hungry. If God heals us, eventually we're going to get sick again. The only thing that lasts forever is eternal life with our Savior. That's the biggest thing that he's trying to tell these people in this moment. Food perishes, salvation lasts forever. You know, John 6, verse 30. So they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? Right, okay. We're not here for food. Show us the sign. What work do you perform? Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Life. That's the true bread. That is the, what we desperately need, is the true bread, the life that comes when Jesus enters our moment with us. When Jesus enters us for the bread of God is he who comes down from gives heaven uh, from heaven and gives life to the world they said to him sir give us this bread always right like I'm telling you when you hear like life they're like please I would love to have this bread at all times I don't want to be hungry ever again give me this bread give me this bread that you speak of give it to me I want it the bread they were wanting was the same physical bread that, that their ancestors got years and years and years and years ago. The, the, the bread, if you know what manna is, it's bread that kind of fell from heaven. When the Israelites were walking around the wilderness and they, it was sustaining them. and That's what they were looking for. A daily sustenance. And Jesus is saying, you guys still don't get it. You guys still don't get it. They were looking for the wrong thing. And the next part right here is where I want to focus on, right this. John 6, verse 35. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Give us this bread always. His response, I'm the bread. Give us this bread. We don't want to hunger and thirst anymore. He says, I'm the bread. I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall not thirst. I am the bread of life. Verse 36, but I said to you that... You have seen me, and yet you do not believe. You've seen me. I'm right here. I am the bread of life. I am standing right in front of me. You have seen me, yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. 
I will never cast out. You come to me, he says, you come to me, I will never cast you out. Come to me. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that, has been, that he has given me, but raise up it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should, not, should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Verse 35 again, right here. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. The statement and the context of them searching for physical sustenance, he says, you're still hungry. Like, I, I fed you. Like, I'm telling you, that was a miracle. I fed you fish and bread, but you're still hungry. That's why you're pursuing me, because there's a hunger inside of you in your stomach. He says, that hunger needs to transition from your stomach to your heart. You need to hunger after me, not hunger after bread. And I, this, I'm telling you, these people, they were so challenged in this moment. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread you seek. I am the fulfillment you're looking for. I am the only thing that will leave you spiritually full. The only thing. You know, these people, they would have been religious, right? The questions they're asking, they, they know, they know the, the Bible. They know the stories of their ancestors. They know. They've heard the prophecies of who Jesus was supposed to be. They, they've, they heard that Jesus was coming. They had seen it. They knew what was coming. Yet Jesus comes and says, I am the fulfillment that you need. And these people were waiting for Jesus, but they fully missed him. Right, these people were walking with Jesus. They had seen the prophecies. They had, they had known that something was coming. Something was coming. Somebody was coming. Yet they fully missed him. They missed him. Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus was what they desperately needed. I think we're all looking for life. I think we're all looking for something to live for and something to die for. We're all looking for something to live for and something to die for. We all are. We're all looking for something. And these people, right, they searched far and wide to find him after he had left. They, they went to the other side of the sea. And sometimes we, we travel long distances to try and find something when Jesus is just right in front of us the whole time. We're, we're trying to chase something. We're trying to, uh, uh, we're trying to taste something that, that's different. And Jesus is saying, no, I'm right here. I've been here the whole time. And, you know, Jesus, he had built up this incredible following, right? Thousands of people are watching him. You know, like, he was famous in this moment. This was like the pinnacle of his stardom was right in this moment. He's preaching to thousands of people. He feeds them all. And then it says, after this moment, they all left. The whole, the crowds left. The crowds left and I think about me and I think about my life I'm like what would I have done in that moment Jesus says I'm the bread of life would I have left would I have stuck around and said no I pursue you if I had seen all my friends who are following Jesus say I'm done I can't I can't do this and they left would I have followed because that's what I saw my friends doing or that's what I saw my family doing it says all that was left was maybe a couple dozen people a few dozen people Thousands to dozens. If we look at right now, some, some of us trying to build businesses, you know, build our lives, trying to network, that's not a very good thing for your business when your customers go down from thousands to dozens in a moment because of the decision you made. But Jesus said, I need to do what the Father's telling me to do. I don't, I don't care about the crowd. I care about the person. Some of us, we're, we're looking so much for the crowd. We're looking for the following that we're missing the people. We're missing the individual, the, the human standing right in front of us. After this conversation, it says only where a few people were left. Jesus' disciples. They wanted physical life. They wanted more bread. They had heard the Son of God would come and, and, and they provide them with bread. So when Jesus came and multiplied the bread, they started to see their physical needs being met by this man. And I get it, right? I'm telling you, when I'm hungry, that's like the first thing I'm searching for, right? Like when I'm hungry, 
Like, I know some people, you know what hangry is? Does anyone get hangry? Like, hungry and angry? When you get hungry, you get angry? Anybody? I know people like that. Close to me. I'm not going to name names. But we're searching for hunger. And I get it, right? And, like, I, I remember, like, Costco, right? Y'all know Costco. One of the best parts of Costco is all the tasty treats you get for free. Like, sometimes I think about putting on disguises or something so I can get, like, more, you know? Because I feel bad if it's, like, me. So, I, like, I want to put on, like, you know that, like, the, like, nose and the mustache and stuff? Like, I put that on. Maybe I'll walk up. Maybe they won't recognize me and give me more snacks. But as we get hungry, and that's all we're searching for, right? These people were searching because they were hungry. They were hungry, right? And we get it. Like, as humans, we have physical needs that need to be met. We, ha we have them. We need to eat. And they're searching for it. They're searching for it, searching for it, searching for it. And Jesus says, the only thing that lasts forever is me, eternal life. This is a hard teaching to receive. Are we following Jesus because he meets our needs or because he brings us salvation? Are we, are we following Jesus because he's providing our physical needs? Or are we following him because of the freedom we get from bondage? Are we following him because, because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life? He says, I will bring you life. Is that why we're following him? Are we following him because he's meeting our need? Freedom from sin and freedom from hell. You know, we all have basic needs, and I have a picture here. It's the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It'll come up. I think I have it. Right? Maybe you've seen this before. It's, you know, if you look at it, starting on the bottom, it's just like what we need to, like, not die, right? Like air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, reproduction, classic. But this is the list of needs. And what's interesting, and I was working in Los Angeles, we were working with, with, uh, with prostitutes, and, and one thing that often happens um, when people get taken into slavery is what they do is they start to take away their needs from the top down. They manipulate people. So they take away your needs from the top. So now... If, I'm, if, I, if I own you, I'm meeting just your basic needs and nothing else. We all have needs. You know, the basic needs obviously at the bottom and then working it way up of what we need less, less, less. You know, in verse 35, Jesus says, we will never have to be hungry or thirsty spiritually again. We just need Jesus, you know. And if you look at the Greek, in the Greek there's two words for life. The first word is bios, which, is, which means physical life or, or, or material life, right? Biology and creation and physical life. But the second word is this word zoe, which means spiritual life. Right? So these people, they came to Jesus searching for bios, searching for physical life. But Jesus said, no. The life I have for you is so much bigger. The, love I, the life I have for you is eternal and he's saying that to them in this moment, Zoe, eternal life, eternal miracles. We have a hunger and thirst that transcends our physical body. You know, these people came to Jesus looking for more food, concerned about their stomach. And Jesus is saying, no, there's something wrong with your heart. There's something wrong with your heart. I have so much more for you. And I believe this so strongly today, this word life. I think if we as humans, as believers, start, pursu start pursuing Zoe, everlasting life, eternal life, rather than just bios, physical life, I'm telling you, we're going to feel so much more fulfilled in our life. If all we're striving for is the fame, if all we're striving for is the money for, for, to survive, rather than saying, God, <laughs> I trust you. And I'm not telling you that like, God will meet your physical needs, of course. Like, I'm not saying he won't. But what I'm saying is Jesus is far more concerned about your spiritual life than your physical life. He's far more concerned about bringing you with him to heaven. That's what concerns him. We need to seek Jesus in everything. We can't fix a spiritual need with a physical solution. We try and do this all the time. At least I do, right? I, I go to my friends to try and find spiritual encouragement or fulfillment. I go to my, 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 my church or my pastor. The only thing that's going to bring you real life is Jesus. We try and find physical solutions to our spiritual problem. And we see this across our world. 
People are searching for something spiritual, something more. And they're looking in the wrong places. Jesus is the nutrition we need. We need to stop looking to Jesus just for physical nourishment, but also for spiritual nourishment. We are so focused on our physical needs that we forget our spirit needs nourishment as well. It's so much easier. I think a lot of us, our radar is so much easier to tell when we're hungry physically, not when we're hungry spiritually. It's so much easier for us to realize, hey, I'm really hungry right now, rather than, wow, I need Jesus right now more than ever. We need to spend time in his word and devour his teachings and live them out. Why, why do we need to do that? And this clear verse, Matthew 15, verse 18, says this. But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. Whoa. Now, what we put in comes out. And we know this physically, right? What we eat comes out eventually. But it's the same thing spiritually. What we put in will come out. What we're putting in to our spirit will come out eventually. One thing, it's the same with our heart. What we put in our heart will come out. Well, do you know what it comes out as? The opposite of the fruit of the spirit. When we're feeling empty inside, we're going to be angry. When we're feeling empty spiritually, we're going to be less patient. We're going to be less kind to each other. We're going to have less self-control. We're going to be less good to each other. We're going to be less faithful because we're so empty on the inside. That's the symptoms of it. The symptoms of being full spiritually, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's the fruit. But what do we do when that stuff's missing? We realize, I need something more. We see this, you know, when, you, when, you, when we have a child and, you know, she's been up like every night for the past like week, like every hour. You guys, some of you know this. I'm telling you, it's so hard to be patient in those moments. It really is. Like, because you're like, I'm so tired. Beth's tired. I'm tired. Jane's tired. It's so hard to be patient. It's so hard to be gentle and kind and loving. It really is. But in those moments, what I'm learning is to take a step back. And say, Jesus, I need you. Like, I, I need you. I can't do this alone. I can't be a pastor by myself. I can't be a, a father or a mother or a husband or a wife or a child or a student by myself. We need Jesus. We need to devour his words. And when we do this, he starts to come out of us. I don't know if you had a moment where something bad happens and you sit there like, why do I feel so peaceful right now? Why do I feel so good? Like life sucks right now, but I feel good. It's because we realize God's with us. We realize he's looking at you saying, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I'm here. I'm with you. I'm the bread of life. And guess what? The life I have for you is so much more than just here on earth. It is so eternal. That's the life that he has for us. How many times have I had things come out of my mouth that were not filled with life and love? How many times have I been frustrated or impatient or angry? And I look inside and say, whoa! I did not realize how hungry I was for Jesus. How many times have I opened my mouth and hurt somebody? How many times have I opened my mouth and said things I wish I didn't say? And we look back and we, we shouldn't, but we regret. We, I shouldn't have done that. And yeah probably shouldn't have done that but Jesus says hey the grace I have for you is sufficient it's going to be okay it's going to be okay let's go together into the future I want to encourage you today that you can truly find Jesus by being with him it's pretty simple I want to encourage you to find some time in your day to read through the Bible and 
spend some time with him, reading and praying. Spend time even as we go through these statements, these I am statements, spend some time. We're going through these all summer. Spend some time reading them. Go ahead. Read ahead. See who Jesus is. He's the bread of life. And if we eat him, we will no longer hunger or thirst again. He is what your soul is longing for. Jesus. Then one thing we want to do as part of this, this series we're doing is something we'll call a takeaway. There's basically just like one thought out of this that I want to encourage you to kind of think about. And it's this. It's on the screen. It's, we can't fix a spiritual need with a physical solution. We need to spend time with Jesus devouring his words and we will never hunger or thirst again. Let's turn to Jesus for our spiritual needs. Let's turn to him and find the hope for this broken world. Turn to him to find the joy that we need and the nourishment that we need. Let's not starve our spirits, but let them be healthy. You know, one thing we want to do right now before we close is I want to give an opportunity today for you to maybe give your life to Jesus for the first time. Maybe you're watching online or maybe you're sitting here in-house today. I want to give you an opportunity to say, you know what? This is what I've been looking for. You may have felt like you've been walking around the sea trying to find the answer, trying to find the solution, and trying to fix the spiritual need with the physical solution, and you're feeling like you can't find it. I'm telling you, Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the one that you're looking for. Jesus is the answer to our spiritual need. So today, maybe, maybe today you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time. And so I encourage everyone, maybe just close your eyes in this room. Maybe today you want to say, you know what? I want to give my life to Jesus today. And there's this simple prayer we can pray. It's just so, so simple. Just pray this, Jesus, I give you my life. Jesus, I, I give you my life. And as we pray this, you say, Jesus, I give you my life. Man, this is just the start of a conversation. This is by no means like the end of the story. This is just the start. But this prayer, Jesus, I give you my life. And maybe today you've prayed that prayer, or you want to pray that prayer, and I want to encourage you right now, just with everyone's eyes are closed, put up your hand, I can see your hand, and I would love to pray with you. Maybe you're watching online. If you're watching online, you want to give your life to Jesus. We have a hand right over here. Anyone else? Give your life to Jesus today. If you're watching online, just let us know. Even write this right in the comments. Say, Jesus, I give you my life. Right in the comment. So let's just, let's just pray together for our brothers and sisters who are giving their lives to Jesus. To God, I thank you that today, even corporately, together, we celebrate our friends making this decision to give you their life. God, as well, as, as we pray for them, we pray that as they enter into this spiritual journey with you, God, I pray that we can be an encouragement to them that we can be a, a resource to them and help them as they go through this journey. And God, I thank you that you are so good. And today, God, we also just say for all of us, we just rededicate ourselves to you. For some of us, we've struggled. For some of us, we, we've had a hard time being focused on reading the Bible and praying and devouring you. And we feel that we're not experiencing the fruit of that. God, I just pray that today you give us the courage, you give us the resources, you give us the help we need to grow deeper in relationship with you. God, I pray for everyone in here, everyone watching online. God, I thank you that you are our bread. God, today we just step into deeper connection and we love you. And God, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.